Welcome back. Voters across the United Kingdom today turned out in their millions for a general election to decide their leader for the next four years. The contest, the first to be held in nearly 100 years, follows those in 2015 and 2017. Let's head off to our London studios now. Here's Simon Pusey with Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. Voting has taken place across the UK for the general election which will decide who will govern Britain for the next four years. It's the third general election in less than five years following those in 2015 and 2017. People queued from 7am at polling stations in 650 constituencies across England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Prime Minister Boris Johnson cast his vote accompanied by his dog in central London. Meanwhile, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, accompanied by his wife, cast his vote in Islington in North London. The Liberal Democrat leader, who is of course pro-staying in the European Union, Jo Swinston, voted with her husband in East Dunbartonshire. Most results are due to be announced in the early hours of Friday morning. Meanwhile, Algerians also started casting their votes on Thursday in a long-delayed presidential election viewed by protesters as a charade intended to keep the ruling elite in power. The army, the strongest political player, sees the election as the only way to restore order by naming a successor to Abdelaziz Bouteflika, who was toppled by a popular uprising earlier this year after two decades in office. All five candidates that won approval to stand are former senior officials, including two former prime ministers, and protesters say none is likely to challenge the army's dominance. New Zealand police have said they plan to recover bodies from White Island, where a volcanic eruption killed at least eight people on Friday morning. The recovery mission will go ahead despite the risk of another eruption, that's according to police. At least eight people are thought to be on the island following the eruption on Monday. All are presumed dead police said they are planning a high-speed recovery of the bodies. We know exactly where they are, those six people. So uh, our first priority will be to get those six people off. Rescue workers in Chile have found human remains after an Air Force plane with 38 people on board went missing on Monday. That's according to a regional governor. Earlier, officials said they had located debris believed to be from an Air Force plane. They said the wreckage was found floating 30 kilometres from where the C-130 Hercules cargo plane last made contact. The plane was en route from Chile's southern city of Punta Arenas to the Antarctic. It's thought the located debris could be part of the remains of the sponges of the internal fuel tanks. The country's Air Force are expected to carry out corresponding checks to determine whether the wreckage was from the missing plane. Nobel Peace Prize laureate Aung San Suu Kyi has returned to the International Court of Justice on Thursday for the final day of the alleged genocide hearing. The Myanmar leader arrived in a heavily guarded convoy. She's defending Myanmar against accusations it has committed genocide against Rohingya Muslim minority population. Gambia, which brought the suits to the UN's top court under the 1948 Genocide Convention, has asked judges to order provisional measures that would act as a kind of restraining order for the Myanmar military until the case is heard in full. The army has been called into northeastern India after thousands of people defied curfews to protest against a new citizenship bill. The amendment bill offers amnesty to non-Muslim illegal immigrants from three countries. Critics say the bill discriminates against Muslims, but in the northeast, protesters claim they will be overrun by Hindus from Bangladesh. Officials said 20 to 30 people were injured in the demonstrations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed for calm. The film mogul Harvey Weinstein has reached a tentative $25 million settlement with dozens of women who have accused him of sexual misconduct. According to lawyers, around 30 actresses and ex-employees would share the payout in the deal. However, it still needs signing off by all parties. Mr Weinstein faces a separate criminal trial next month on rape and sexual assault charges, which he denies. The Hollywood producer could face life in jail if convicted. Residents of Ethiopia's capital city, Addis Ababa, gathered in their thousands to welcome their Prime Minister, Abe Ahmed, upon his return from receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> Abe won the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize in October for his peacemaking efforts, which ended two decades of hostility with Ethiopia's longtime enemy, Eritrea. He reconciled countries who fought over border issues. Since taking power in 2018, Abai has implemented sweeping political reforms that won him praise, but also exposed long repressed tensions between Ethiopia's many ethnic groups. 
And finally, Thailand's king has taken part in the final event of his coronation. Flanked by more than 2,000 oarsmen, rowing to a steady drumbeat king, Mahavajaya Longkorn travelled down Bangkok's Chao Pira River as part of a 52-barge flotilla. It's a rare chance to see the royal family in the flesh for many Thai people. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thanks a lot, Simon. To sports now, here's Ayotunde Tunde Balugun. Thank you, John. My aim by International Football Club this evening beat Rivers United by a lone goal in a rescheduled Nigeria Professional Football League encounter in Abba. Victor Mboma got the only goal of the match to move the seven-time Nigeria League champions to second on the league table. Aimba now have 13 points from six league games. Rivers United are now 11th on the league table with nine points from seven league games. Arsenal Football Club have progressed to the last 32 of the UEFA Europa League as Group F winners after late goals from Alexander Lacazette and Bukayo Saka rescued a 2-2 draw at Standard Liège. The Gunners only needed to avoid defeat by five goals to book their spot in the knockout stages, but for much of the night they were heading to Monday's draw as an unseeded team after Standard Liège took a two-goal lead. Victoria's late turnaround in Germany to win 3-2 saw Freddy Jumberg's side rescue a point and reclaim top spot. Kluge beat Celtic 2-0 to progress to the next round, with Celtic top in the group. Ren beat Lazio. Nigeria's Oginio Nazi returned to club action since December 2018, which ended in defeat as Basel beat Trabzon Spor and Hitafe beat Krasnodar 3-0. And that's in the sports news. Ijoma, back to you for the wrap. Thanks a lot, Ayo Sunde. And the main news again. Court today sentenced two INEC officials to 21 years in prison, over 362 million naira they collected from the former Minister of Petroleum, Dezani Alison Madweke, during the 2015 general elections in Adamawa State. The court also ordered the Inspector General of Police to ensure the arrest of Mrs. Alison Madweke for trial. Also today, the Senate began the probe of the Federal High Court invasion into Ab in Abuja by DSS operatives as the body of senior advocates of Nigeria weighed into the matter. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Do have a good night.